Good morning everyone. The topic that assigned to me are understanding museum, importance and purpose of museum, and general museum. Understanding museum. Museum has traditionally revolved around collecting, preserving, researching, and displaying objects. Museum contains records of human presence and the individual experience of people. When examining actual object and artifact as primary sources of information, one may be able to see the authentic experience as well as the meaning and it may bring to the audience. Museums provide the authenticity of the historical writing through objects and artifacts. It provides it, it, it proves that the written documents learned by of the student in the classroom are authentic. authentic. Museums preserve and exhibit important cultural, artistic, historical, or scientific artifacts. While these exhibits provide informative and visual exploration, there are many benefits to visit this institution. Simply put, museums help to teach, inspire, and connect communities. When we say authentic is describe something that is real or genuine and not counterfeit, counterfeit, the question is what makes museum authentic? Research from cultural history, history museum has emphasized that objects qualify as authentic if they promote a profound connection to the past. On a similar note, works of art are ascribe authenticity if they are directly linked to the artistic creator. Next is the importance of uh, next is the importance and purpose of museum. Museum is an important institution that preserves cultural heritage with the primary intent to collect, preserve, understand and exhibit the different relics and artifacts for a better understanding of the past. Museum is not only used to collect, preserve, and research and exhibit, exhibit, the, exhibit the different relics and antiques. They are also special places where heritage is being preserved. Museums are being used in a huge variety of societies all over the world. Further, Museum offer formal and non-formal acad academics to anyone who will be taking who will be taking an interest because it is a free to the public. For centuries, museum have played an integral role in preserving the history of our society. Exhibits tells us stories about how our nation or or our communities and our culture came to be and with. Without them, those stories could be forgotten. Museums serve our communities in a multitude of ways as we have seen firsthand. Museums also have the power to create unity on both a social and political level, but also on a local one. Local museums are able to provide a sense of sense of community and place by celebrating a collective heritage, offering a great way to get know the history of a particular area. Last is the general museums. So general museum hold collect in more than one subject and are therefore sometimes known as multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary museum. Many were found in the 18th, 19th, or early 20th century. Most originated in earlier in earlier private collections and reflected the uh, encyclopedic spirit of of the times. Certain general museums reflect, reflected the influence of cultural contact, made through trades. Some museums hold a number of important specialized collection that would qualify them to the group in more in more than category of specialization. I'm going to present to you the Natural History in Natural Science Museum. Museums of Natural and Natural Science are concerned with the natural world. 
Their collection may contain specimens of birds, mammal, insects, plants, rocks, minerals, and fossils. These museums have their origin in the cabinet of curiosities, built up by prominent individuals in Europe during Renaissance and Enlightenment. With the development of the natural science in the 19th centuries, museums exhibiting objects from the natural world flourish in their number multiplied. In the United States and Latin America, their collection of an included object of physical and social anthropological as well as the natural sciences. More recently, natural science museums have responded to new trends of natural conservation and broader environmental matters. Hello, I'm Isaac Graham Igumanit and I will be discussing the science and technology museums and art museums. So first is the science and technology museums. Museums of science and technology are concerned with the development and application of scientific ideas and instrumentation, like museums of natural science and natural history. Science museums have their origins in the Enlightenment. Some of them developed from the collection of, the, of learned societies, other from private collections such as the Taylor's Museum at Harlem, in the 18th century. A later development in science museum involved the application of science so that museums began to pre preserve the material evidence of technological as well as scientific endeavor. Some science and technology museums now concentrate on the demonstrating science and its applications. In these museums, the preservation of process is emphasized over the preservation of object. Science museums are particularly popular with children as well as adults and often provide opportunities for their visitors to participate through demonstration, models, and interactive displays. Of more recent establishment are industrial museums, which often include a large technical component. These museums are often sponsored directly or indirectly by industries which occasionally found their own museums to preserve their heritage and promote their work. So science and technology museums are institutions that aim to educate and inspire the public about science, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics through exhibitions, interactive displays, and education pro programs. These museums typically house collection of scientific artifacts, technological innovations, and scientific instrument. In recent years, scientific and technological museums have expanded their scope to cover a wider range of topics, including the history of science and technology, environmental science, and emerging technologies. They may also feature hands-on exhibit and interactive experience that allows visitors to explore scientific concepts and principles in a fun and engaging way. Science and technology museums Important are important institutions that serve as valuable resources for scientific knowledge, education, and public engagement. As our understanding of the world, world around us continue to evolve, these museums will undoubtedly play an increasing important role in shaping our collective understanding of science and technology. Next is the art museums. The art museums, called art gallery in some places, is concerned prim primarily with the object as means of unaided communication with its visitors. Aesthetic value is therefore a major consideration in accepting items for the collections. Traditionally, these collections have com comprised paintings, sculpture, and the decorative arts. A number of arts museums have included the industrial arts since the 19th century when they were introduced particularly to encourage good industrial design. Uh, the collection of so-called primitive art had a profound influence in certain forms of 20th century art, but it can be argued that aesthetics has subordinated function and association to such an extent that objects often are presented in totally alien contexts. 
In some countries, this criticism applies to archaeological material as well. The ambience of the work is enhanced by highlighting its form and color with proper lighting and background. At one time, at one time artificial light was preferred for the paintings both to create an effect and to prevent exposure, exposure to harmful elements in natural light, but it sometimes provides unnecessarily theatrical presentation or creates an artificiality that can inhibit the visitor's appreciation and enjoyment of the work. So art museums are institutions that house collection of arts, including paintings, sculptures, drawings, photographs, and other visual media. They serve as repositories of the cultural heritage, preserving and exhibiting artworks from different time periods and regions. Art museums are often considered cultural institutions that have unique role in society, uh, in society as they play a key role in, the shaping, uh, in shaping our understanding and appreciation of art and culture. Art museums have evolved over time and many now offer a range of service programs beyond their traditional roles as galleries and exhibition spaces. For example, they offer educational programs, workshops, and lectures that help visitors learn more about art and artists. They may also provide research and conservation services, helping to preserve and restore artwork for future generations. Art museums are important cultural institutions that play a vital role in preserving and promoting art and culture. Through their exhibitions, programming, and research, research they help to foster appreciation, appreciation and understanding of the arts, while also serving as a source of inspiration and creativity for the visitors of all ages and backgrounds. My name is Rob Dian Esmoya. For our topic for today is the Museum in the Philippines. First one is the University of Santo Tomas Museum of Arts and Science. The University of Santo Tomas Museum was formally established in 1869 to comply with the 1865 Reglamento de Segunda Senanza that required all first class colleges to have a Museo de Historia Natural. It's the oldest existing museum in the Philippines with a collection of, of over 300 years. It began as an observation room in the 17th century and has since expanded to include items from all intramuros churches, gold pieces found all over the Philippines, household wares, weaponry, brass and metal crafts, and burial jars. Next is Ayala Museum. Ayala Museum was established in 1967 under the auspices of the Filipinas Foundation. The Ayala Museum is one of the most important and visited private museums in the Philippines. It houses a large number of the rare and priceless cultural and historical items such as handcrafted dioramas of the Philippine history scenes. It also holds a fine arts collection, paintings by Juan Luna, Fernando Almor Solo, and Fernando Zubel, and and ethnographic artifacts of the rural minority communities, the maritime vessels collection of the finely crafted ship model space tribute to an Asian boat is worth every visit. The third one is the Sal Shrine. The Sal Sal Shrine in Calamba, Laguna was inaugurated in June 19, 1950. It's one of the most frequented historical and tourist, tourist sites in the Philippines with an average of 270 visitors annually. It is a replica of the ancestral house where Jose Rizal was shaped and molded and who would later become the finest expression of his race. President Elpidio Quirino ordered the reconstruction of the National Heroes Home through the supervision of the national artists. And the architect is Juan Nakpil and it was inaugurated in 1950. It is home to various memorabilia, books, manuscripts, and artworks that belong to the Philippine national hero. It also 
as a deep web that has become a wishing well for the tourists and visitors. And also this result, result shrine as another location in the Pollock City. The next one is National Museum of Natural History. The National Museum of Natural History it is loca located along Agrifina Circle in Rizal Park, Matila. Open and open its doors to the to the public of March 17, 1910, in order to provide the Smithsonian Institution with more space for collection and research. The building was not fully completed until June in 1911. The new museum is part of the National Museum Complex in Manila, showcasing the country's diverse flora and fauna, interactive activities and models, and a life-size replica of Lolong, Lolong the Crocodile and many more. The next is the Mine Museum. The Mine Museum is a science museum in Manila. Philippines that opened on March 16, 2012. It is located in Botifacha Global City, a business district of the city. It is a world-class science museum in the Manila that provides extraordinary educational experience and engages children to be more interactive. The Mine Museum consists of five galleries, the story of atom, earth, life, universe, and technology. The 250 interactive exhibits are designed to enrich people's knowledge. The tour around the area will take you to an amazing journey about the science discovery. Next is the National Museum of the Philippines. The National Museum in, the, in Manila is open on October 24, 1891. It is the primary institution to respiratory of the Filipino heritage, offering an enriching visual experience experience with its expensive archaeological, anthropological, and bonatical, geological, and zoological artifacts in the diverse artworks by local artists. It was originally designed as a public library in 1918 and, and it was renovated in 2003 to become the National Art Gallery. Next is the Museo de Bawenio. Museo de Bawenio or the Museum of the People of Dabao in one of the two known <laughs> museums in the Philippines. It is located in an insular village just about 100 meters from the main gate and is slightly bigger than the old Daba Museum. It is known for its fine outside appearance and its rich collection in handicraft crafts. It is divided into four rooms. So, the four rooms is the the one one is the, the indigenous people's gallery. The indigenous people people's gallery. It is a collection of arts, crafts, musical instruments, weapons, and light made by different tribes who live in the province. The second one is the more people's gallery. It is collection of miniature houses and boats musical instrument, chairs, weapons, armors, and crowns used by the Muslim people predominantly found in the southern Philippines. The third one is the Contemporary Gallery. It's a collection of classic and modern design from wood carvings to painting among many others. The, the last one is the Memorabilia Gallery. It's a collection of olden day clouds, bills, musical notes, and porcelains, and a lot more. Next one is the Butua National Museum. The Butua National Museum displays historical relics and cultural heritage from the province and region, including archaeological artifacts, ethnographic materials, and helium pieces. There are two types of poles. The first one is prehistoric and archaeological hall. This area contains a variety of primitive artifacts such as stone crafts, metal craft, potteries, goldsmithing, burl coffin, and ceramic wires. It also contains a bronze pestle believed to have been brought by the foreigners trading with the locals. 
the second one is the ethno ethnology how oh, the area contains some artifacts and objects that feature the cultural communities of the Manobo, Mamanwa, Igaonon, and the Lowland Butuanons. I'm Adrian Ponce and we're going to talk about the historical shrines in the Philippines and there are three historical shrines in the Philippines we're going to talk about and the first one is Rizal Shrine. Uh, the Rizal Shrine is dedicated to the life work of our national hero Jose Rizal uh, and it's located on Santa Clara Street, Fort Santiago in Intramuros, Manila. This fortified complex which houses the building Rizal spent his last night and where his family later found concealed in an oil lamp the famous poem my ultimate adios or my last farewell uh, the shrine is home to various memorabilia books manuscripts and artworks belonging to the polymath and the renaissance man rizal mm. and the uh, sites also includes the cell where rizal imprisoned before his execution as well as a replica of his writing desk and other personal belongings. Mm, the sec and the second one is Pinaglabanan Shrine and the Spirit of Pinaglabanan. The Pinaglabanan Shrine is a historical site located in San Juan City, Philippines. Uh, it's dedicated to the memory of the Battle of Pinaglabanan, which took place on August 30, 1896 during the Philippine Revolution against Spanish colonial rule. And the first attempt of Takate Paneros led by Andres Benipasio and Emilio Sinto to fight the Spanish forces in late August of 1896. And this shrine features a monument and markers that commemorate the battle, as well as a museum, display artifacts, as you can see in the picture, and exhibit related to the event and revolution. And the site also include a park and a statue of Andres Bonifacio, uh, one of the leaders of the revolution. Lastly, the Lapu-Lapu Shrine. And the Lapu-Lapu is consider considered as the first Filipino hero who, success who successfully defended the Philippines from the Spanish inv invasion. Uh, he's a symbol of courage and success in defeating enemies. In fact, his image is the central figure in the seal of the Philippine National Police and the Bureau of Fire Protection. And the Lapu-Lapu Shrine is located, is a historical site located in Mactan Island, Cebu, Philippines. It's dedicated to the memory of Lapu-Lapu, a warrior and a chieftain of Mactan Island who is known for his victory against Magellan, Ferdinand Magellan and Battle of Mactan on April 27, 1521. And the shrine features a statue of Lapu-Lapu and markers that commemorate the battle and the heroism of the native Filipinos. The site also includes a park and museum displays, artifacts, and exhibit related to the event and history of the island. The Lapu-Lapu Shrine is an important cultural and historical landmark in the Philippines and is visited by many tourists and locals who want to learn more about the country's history and the life of its heroes. The site also hosts annual commemorative events and festivals including the Kadaugan Sa Mactan Festival which celebrates the victory of Lapu-Lapu and the native warriors over the Spanish invaders. So that's all. Thank you.